Good evening and a warm welcome to The Big Debate. I'm your host, Iguma Gabriel. We're coming to you from our studios here at CTV on Naguru and Tinda 2 Road. And uh, we're glad that on this 16th day of February 2022, you're joining us for the discussion. Uh, for those of you who took a rest from work because it's a public holiday, I hope you had a chance to reflect on what you can do to make Uganda a better place. Because Jan and Luwum, who we commemorate on this day, actually paid the ultimate price, giving his life so that people in Uganda could enjoy their human rights and human dignity. But on the big debate today, we talk about the increasing prices, fuel prices and commodity prices. You will remember that towards the end of 2021, there was a crisis, a crisis brought on by a government measure to test all truck drivers that were coming into Uganda. It caused the truck drivers, especially uh, coming through the Kenyan border, to boycott and therefore not cross into Uganda. In a very short while, the fuel pumps managed to run dry and the prices went high. Government intervened and the truck drivers were tested for free and they came into Uganda, fuel came into Uganda and the Prime Minister promised that prices were going to go down. But the prices have stayed higher than they were before the price hike, which means not only fuel prices have gone up, even the prices of other commodities have gone up. How come government interventions are not delivering what the government promised? Are Ugandans being cheated? And does government even care that commodity prices are too high for many Ugandans? That's what we discuss on the big debate today. Let's meet our panelists. Our panel tonight, Peter Ogwang is a Ugandan politician and social worker who serves as Ngariam County Member of Parliament and as the current Minister of State for Economic Monitoring in the Office of the President of Uganda. From 2007 until 2010, Ogwang was employed as an assistant private secretary to the president of Uganda at State House. In 2011, he successfully contested for the Eastern Youth Parliamentary seat on the ruling National Resistance Movement political party ticket. He later won and represented the youth in the ninth parliament. In 2016, he was elected MP for Usu County and would later be appointed State Minister for Information, Communication, and national guidance. Ogwang is a seasoned politician who has grown up through the ranks and has previously served as a member of the Committee on Presidential Affairs and also a member of the Parliamentary Budget Committee and a member of the National COVID-19 Task Force. Ogwang is revered as a strong advocate in the fight against corruption and has since used his office to monitor and oversee the implementation of all policies, programs and projects in both central and the local government. He also launched a crackdown campaign on civil servants who abuse their responsibilities of serving people and resort to diverting all the money entrusted to them by virtue of their employment placements, both in the central government and the local government. Ogwang led a countrywide monitoring campaign where he has exposed corrupt public officials. Mohamed Mwanga Chivumbi is a Ugandan economist, politician and member of parliament of Butambala County. Chivumbi was a member of the Democratic Party before defecting to the National Unity Platform Party. He was elected the chairperson of the Buganda Parliamentary Caucus in the 11th Parliament. Born in Butambala District, Mwanga attended Makere University where he graduated with a bachelor's degree in economics. He would later earn an associate degree in democracy and development from the Uganda Martyrs University and a Master of Human Resource Management from Uganda Management Institute. Chivumbi is mayor of steel and his political activism has led him to prison several times. He was the leader of the pressure group Popular Resistance Against Life Presidency. Chivumbi was also one of the brains behind the Activists for Change and Opposition Leading Pressure Group that started the Walk to Work campaign to draw attention to the harsh economic conditions in the country. In 2009, Chivumbi was the lead petitioner in a case where the Constitutional Court ruled that anybody or an organization that wanted to hold a public rally did not seek police permission. Honorable Mwanga Chivumbi now holds the portfolio 
of Shadow Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development. Ladies and gentlemen, our panelists. There you are. Those are our panelists for the big debate today. And even as the camera goes over to them, you will realize that the two gentlemen took the public holiday seriously. They rested and it is reflected in their dress code. Uh, it's, uh, I'm looking overdressed today uh, <laughs> because of our two guests. But, uh, well, uh, if we could just start on that. Uh, you know, as you remembered Jan and Luwum, uh, what did that mean for you today, Honorable Gwanga? Of course, first of all, with you, I want to thank you, my brother, and I want to thank also my brother, Honorable Mwanga Chibumbe. I want to first put this clear to the viewers that I don't remember the last time I was hosted on Studio Dev since I left ICT. It's the first time again I'm appearing on Studio Dev. And such a privilege that and it's such here a at privilege, CTV. Of course, at CTV, and I want to begin by thanking the management of CTV. It's for those who have not been here, maybe let me also advertise <laughs> for, for CTV that please, you can come around. It is true. I apologize, I've come late because I've been in office working. As you're all aware, in, on 26th, which is a week from now, we shall be launching the parish development model. As the presidency and also the president where I am, I am in two pillars one on mindset and community mobilization, then on governance and administration. So today I was attending a meeting on governance and administration right from three o'clock up to 8 p.m. So as far as this day is concerned, I have still worked, I have not <laughs> rested. But apologies for my dress code today, which of course next time I'll also try to dress like a minister or a member of parliament <laughs> because you're overly dressed. But for today, really, we want to thank all our people who have celebrated, of course, uh, the death of Janan Luum, whom we all know, was an Archbishop of Church of Uganda. I'm proud as one of the Anglicans had been invited to attend the function, but I couldn't make it. But we all must accept that he died for the cause, and let's all stand strong and walk the talk. That's my message mm -hmm. to the people of Uganda. I thank you so, so much. All right. Honorable thank Chibumbi, uh, Honorable Peter Ogwang leaves it at walking the talk. Yeah, I must also, you know, I've not met Honorable Ogwang <laughs> for quite some time. Mm -hmm. We used to work together in the budget committee, mm -hmm. and he was my boss as a commissioner. A fairly good man. You can imagine fairly good man. <laughs> I'm, saying, I'm saying a good man. At a very personal level, he's a very good man. Uh, I also took it that actually, because it was a public holiday, mm -hmm. difficult to dress the way, and I also tender my <laughs> apology. Uh, maybe I should have dressed like a shadow minister. <laughs> but a shadow for, for, for me passes. Um, the day is uh, big because uh, days of this nature uh, are days to sit down, introspect, and then affirm our commitment, recommit and say, okay, those were dark days, never again on our watch mm -hmm. should these kind of actions happen. Um, so in the aspect of introspection is to look at the world around us and see whether we've done any better. I strongly believe the biggest room in any house is the room for improvement. The space out there always is for if always to work to extend the frontiers. Um, they said Democrat has three things to do in a lifetime. Where democracy is absent, you work towards establishing it. Where it is already established, you consolidate it. Where it is already consolidated, you improve it. No room for you to be on the, um, on the, on the negative trajectory mm -hmm. if you're a Democrat. So 
it can't go without saying that even as we celebrate the Archbishop, we have all these pictures on the TV, horrible, of Kakwenzi, of, uh, of so many. We, we still have missing people. We still have people in detention without trial. We still have people we can't trace. Really, um, this day should have been a day maybe for the government to offer an apology. That in remembrance of Rumi, we have not done uh, the best we could. I was speaking on some radio, I said, these Christians, there's that thing you say, eh? I've done wrong. <laughs> I know it in Uganda. <laughs> I don't know how you state it in English. I'm not a Christian. Lord, in your mercy, have, uh, Lord in your, uh, have mercy upon us. Yes. So you have sinned, but forgive me. So I would have expected the leadership to be humble on this day and to tend an apology. And I think the people of Uganda deserve better than those pictures we are seeing on, on the screen. The, the current leadership cannot have an excuse whatsoever to torture, for people to disappear, to disobey the 48 hours of detention without trial, to be detained in a gazetted place, to be arrested in accordance to the law. Those are values. And I think this should have had meaning today if those messages came out, but uh, I don't think All that. Right. Some of those messages actually did come out, but uh, it's not our topic for discussion today. <laughs> and last week we did actually extensively uh, but maybe, discuss the issue of torture. You would like to I want weigh in a little? To, I All want right. first to make a clarification on some of those issues. Like my brother said, the last time we met, I think was again in a talk show in NBS. We all condone torture. First, I want to put that clear. This government does not make it as part and parcel of its work methods. That I want to clarify. Number two, when we talk about missing persons, I also want to say this. And most times this has been raised. And they have asked, we have asked the leadership of opposition, who are these missing persons? Have they submitted the list to the security agencies All right. for them to be verified? Or it is the politics? Yes. And because I also want to say this. We come here, we make these statements, which try to portray government as being one which is insensitive, which does not look at issues of human rights. And yet, let's be realistic, that this government is on record. Those people or those soldiers or policemen who have gone against the laws of this country, individually, they are held accountable. All right. So I want that to be G clear. Gentlemen, and particularly Honorable Guang, but today can we agree that we can do better? Yes, I want to say this, that uh, we can do better, but all state actors and non-state actors, including as a political class, mm. must be able to say this country belongs to us. Okay. Number two, we must also be able to appreciate that most times they also make mistakes because there's now a new, I could say, a new way of life where we are beginning to say, for me to be seen as a human, a human rights activist, a Democrat, I must insult Honorable Chivumbi, which I have a lot of respect for Honorable Chivumbi here. I have quite many people in opposition whom I respect. I value them with high esteem. And oh. I cannot even attempt to begin to belittle him, to insult I, him, okay. undermine him. By, by me doing that, then I'll be saying, I am I'm working within the confines of the human rights, or I'm working for democracy, which for me, we really need to define those two fundamentals. At what point are you misusing yourself than right. being calling yourself as a human rights activist? All right. So Let me you. ensure that we <laughs> use our time well today so that in the second segment of the show, we can mm. actually yes. uh, touch on the issues, you know, mm. around how you're handling some of these things <laughs> in Parliament. Mm. You, in the introduction, I did mention the fact that, you know, many Ugandans are feeling the pinch from commodity prices rising, starting with the fuel, you know, crisis into many other 
uh, commodities going higher and higher. You know, you can talk about uh, sugar, you can talk about uh, tomatoes, you can talk about cooking oil. Is the government aware of this? And, you know, government that promised that prices were going to come down, uh, you know, seems like you're not delivering on this promise. First, I want to thank the government. I also want to thank the right of Prime Minister. I want to acknowledge it is true. Some time back, like you did say in our introduction of our discussion here, that we had a challenge of truck drivers. And that challenge was caused by our officials under means of health. That the East African Council of Ministers are taking a position that let within the EAC region, they had accredited a certain number of laboratories to test all drivers within the region. As long as you reach within the border points, once you present your PCR test and it's negative, you should be allowed to move in. Unfortunately, within the Ministry of Health, some of the officers didn't get that position clearly and that's what caused the crisis in the border. But I want to say this, that point, that issue was clarified. That's why you see then today, we had a cabinet meeting on Monday, we took a position that even now flights coming in into our country, mm -hmm. as long as you have a PCR test within 72 hours, we don't intend you to have another test in Entebbe. That one is not acceptable. As of now, it has been suspended. Why are we doing this? We are trying to open an ease business within the country. So, what's happening today? First, I also want to say this, that all petroleum products in Uganda are imported. Specifically, I want to address myself to fuel, particularly petrol and diesel and other kinds of fuel. They are all imported. In Uganda, we get 90% of our petroleum products come through Kenya. 10% come through Tanzania. So what does it mean that? We are a landlocked country which gets petroleum products from overseas. Now, when you come within the country here, there's a challenge which, of course, we're witnessing. As of now, we expect the fuel prices to would have reduced to an average, which is worldwide today. I have tried to make a computation that worldwide today, a price of a liter of petrol is meant to cost about 4,400 and something shillings. That's according to the entire world. If you look at the source, which is global price, globalpetrol.com. But as of now, diesel, if you make a competition within that website, it's meant to cost, according to Uganda shilling, it's meant to be about 4,088 shillings. But what is the case that at home here? At home here, as of now, I want to take an example so of uh, Shell and Total. A shell petrol is about 5,000 shillings. That's according to shell. And if you go to total, it's about 5,080 shillings. That's petrol. Diesel, even if you recall, diesel then, at that time, we didn't have much crisis on diesel. It was about 4,000, maybe 100 and something figures. So what are the push factors driving our local, I could say, suppliers, within the country to still continue maintaining a high cost of fuel price. In my opinion, which I want to say this, the question of we must also accept that we're under a private-led economy where government cannot come in to regulate prices of what? Prices of fuel. That entirely was left out to the private sector. For me as a minister in charge of economic monitoring, this is an issue now which I'm picking to manage because one of my roles is to work with the private sector to monitor on how the, the investment specifically, to monitor the private sector on how they are doing businesses and how they can work closely. Because I am also meant to be a link between the private sector and HD president. And I want to confirm this. I have held a meeting with the private sector foundation, myself, to discuss what are the challenges which they are facing within as a private sector. How can government come in to work with them to, to address some of those challenges but specifically as of today it is true despite fuel being abundant in the country the fundamental question you ask why are these commodities going up right that's not why I'm coming to say that it means that the private sector we have within the country 
seems to be wanting to begin to exploit the, 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 the ordinary Ugandans, and that's why now well, I'm, I'm coming into <coughs> Sudan. If, if the government says it's a free market economy, yes, government of cannot sector. fix prices, yes. you know, and therefore you leave it to the private sector, if the private sector is profit driven, then it is understandable that they will take advantage of uh, situations like this. But I want to say this, that this government works closely with the private sector and specifically the private sector foundation, which is an umbrella which unites all the private sector companies, players in the, in the country. It is true we are talking about the forces of demand and supply. What I want to say here is this, that within the private sector, with due respect, they also understand the rate a speed at which the ordinary Ugandans are facing it. We have just come mm. out of this a long COVID lockdowns of almost two years. So let's be realistic. Why would, despite fuel prices coming down, despite us having enough fuel in supply within the country, because actually I, want, I wanted to say this, about 6.5 million liters of fuel are consumed a day in our country. We must also say that the one thing which is enabler is fuel. For you to transport soap from Kampala to Katakui, it's diesel. For that soap, to, for you to reach Katakui, and you begin to put a price of soap to go at 6,000 a bar, 8,000, 9,000, is one thing which I want to say honestly. As a minister responsible for economic monitoring, we must engage the private sector to say, no, here okay. now, we are reaching a level where we are getting overboard. Okay. What, what would be the, have we increased taxes? Nothing. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy a member of parliament is here. Is there within the end of the, middle of the financial year where we have come as government with the new tax measures? No. So what are the push factors? All For right. now, I want to say, fuel, as far as fuel is concerned, and that's also again, before I could hand it over to my brother, I remember even the Minister of Energy did say that the time is up that this, where there are quite many companies, some of them, people must shun. That's it, because it's not no. only one company which is producing soap, it's not only one company which is producing salt, it's not one company which is producing sugar. If Kakira is selling a kilo of sugar at 8,000, is it the same as Kinyara? Is it the same as Mayuge? Is it the same as Kaliro? Is it the same as Atiak? No, we have quite many, many sugar companies here. Yeah. So for me, I want as government, we have enough fuel now in supply mm. within the country. We don't expect to have scarcity of fuel again. I thank you. Honorable Chief the government says we have enough fuel. Uh, I'll just add, uh, you know, uh, the Honorable Minister said, you know, we have a member of parliament. We actually have a shadow minister for finance. That's easy. Uh, you know, planning <laughs> and economic <laughs> development. Honorable <laughs> Chivumbi, as the opposition, have you looked at this crisis? No. You give alternative policy. Do you no, have alternative no, no, policy you, to fix this he, issue? Here I go again. When a minister of parliament, begin of, of the executive, on matters of... Uh, of execution refers to a, guest, to a guest later, then there you go home. <laughs> because it should be me to say it's government. <laughs> oh, well, is because is government is yes. the executor, is the implementer, they are the ones on the wheels. He knows and that. And then you hold them to account on what they know, have said they're going to do. He knows our recommendations are advisory to them. But, but you don't know what you want. I was the, on the, the meeting one subject to matter, which I wanted to pick it clearly. So, as a brother that, he, as government, we propose tax measures to parliament. It is parliament which approves mm. the tax measures. We have proposed. But where we are at the moment yes. has very little to do with tax the measures. The reason why I brought that example, it was to try to tell the public and the viewers that I don't see the reason as to why mm. we must continue so, to so have high fuel, so let's say high commodity prices, when we have not even increased any tax on any commodity as of now. All right. That's yes. it. Okay, you okay. wanted just a confirmation. That mm. they, haven't, they haven't done so. That's true. But then you look at, you know, this is an amazing economy. This economy of ours that fuel 
increase will happen up to to 2000 and life is normal that economy has got a lot of resilience because ordinarily ordinarily that kind of incre of increment will eat into your wage your capacity to do your work to perform your function so there is a, a miracle where we we do our work actually in another country for it to last a month it would be a huge economic crisis and a political issue and there would be some resignations yeah? there would be heads to roll but the question is it all boils down to planning and management even in a free market economy government is a regulator it's not a player but it's a regulator and it has many fiscal and monetary policies it can pursue to influence the price, the, the price of commodities. But look at the mess we are in, a simple mess. Him and me travel even under COVID. Because people have trust in institutions. I went to Turkey at, at the height of COVID. COVID. The only thing the government of Turkey wanted to look at was, do I, have I tested within 47 hours in Uganda? Yes. The COVID test valid? Yes. On, on our way back, you cannot board a plane until you have tested. Uganda was testing people again. Partly because, one, we can easily come up with fake tests. We have the East African region protocol. If Kenya has tested you, mm. okay, why should you, as you go into no man's land, hmm, test again? That means you don't trust um, uh, what Kenya has done. So, so this was one, it tested our belief in the East African community and our competence. But my fear also that that could have been also a business of people. Because testing costed money. Is it 100 and... Yeah? 150,000 shillings. 35 dollars. 35 dollars. And, 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 and the people testing were not government people, it was a public facility. So somebody made a kill out of this and the ordinary person, the ordinary Ugandan paid a price because somebody wanted to make $30 and you know a truck has two people normally, a driver and a tan boy. So those are $60. Actually, 70, yes, because of 35. Mm. <laughs> Actually, 70 dollars. And somebody was pocketing 70 dollars and caused all this economic challenge. But it's also aware that ideally we should have our oil reserves. And we, you know, mm. we appropriate money. Our fuel reserves. Our that fuel are, reserves. Are since been found to be empty Should and uh, <laughs> even the ones even the fuel that was available could not even go beyond a week go beyond a week he knows that there is um, um a premium of, there is we must have fuel reserves to last us is it three months three months three months in case of so ways where are our reserves so these are questions of management then the question also, because he wants to roll it over to the private sector, it is say, you know, the private entrepreneur, eh, a good entrepreneur, will look at the law and find, as long as it doesn't, you know, it doesn't commit a crime, he will find to beat the law to make money. That's what 
entrepreneurship is about. Find a loophole and maximize it. Find profit. the loophole and maximize it. The role of government in this case is to plug those loopholes, to ensure that the, 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 the private people have nothing to exploit. Mm. Now, when they find you bare and find you here prepared, fairly well organized, well, fairly disorganized, they are simply enterprising. They're simply taking advantage of you. That's what entrepreneurship is all about. All right. So, for you to call entrepreneurship and you want to summon their patriotism, and say, so you guys, as you make your money be patriotic, you may be asking them too much. So, for me, this is, and, and, and this has not been affecting the economy just because of these fuel prices. I don't know. Me and him represent rural areas, constituencies. A bunch of Matoke could go to 3,000 at farm gate, even without this crisis. Mm. Now, you consuming it here in Ntinda, eh? it is uh, 15,000. When you really ask the woman... A small, woman, miserable bunch. A small, miserable bunch. When you ask a woman selling that bunch of matoka, the mark of profit... 500 shillings to 1,000 shillings. Well, and she will be, she'll die to sell if she makes off 2,000. Then the question is, who is milking off the, <laughs> the, 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 the balance? Because 3,000... So who is taking the 10,000? Not even the truck owners are making a kill. He knows we here could have owned a truck at one time. We've been doing this business <laughs> somehow along the way. You don't earn money. So the entire bulk of that is the cost of, of fuel. Therefore, even before this came in, there is a crisis and it is impeding our cultural growth. It is impeding investments because that's why a crime oh. doesn't attract you. Right, but you <clears throat> yes, whereas in this period there's been no increment in taxes, you will recall, and I think at that time you were on the budget committee, this current budget that we are running, the taxes on fuel were actually increased by, if I remember correctly, a whole 1,000 shillings. Yeah. So, so there was an increment on fuel, but that, no, by the time this crisis came, where is right? That yes. increment had come into effect. Yes. And uh, we, we really had a bit of a stable uh, uh, price, price at around 3,500 mm. or, or thereabout. Now, the, the current, so the current crisis is not driven by that tax yeah? uh, incident, no. It is driven, it's manufactured, it's artificial. Mm. And to tell you, you see, if you are dealing with fuel, the, when prices rise, and be on the side of people who are buying, let me put you into the shoes of the people dealing in fuel. Why prices don't come back so quickly as you expect? They are dealing with the stock. If I bought stock at a high price, okay, now I must exhaust that stock and go back and buy another stock at a lower price for me to be able to reduce the pump price. So until you have completely swept mm. off the stock Honorable that you be, Was this a stock issue because no, it no, was no, a no, scarcity no, issue no, 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 I'm not that drove price up? No, no, about scarcity. You mm. see, the, the, the peop, the, the, when there is scarcity, the, these people whom you are choosing at the pump, yes. charging 5,000, they buy stock yes. from the depot. Okay, all right. Yeah. When you buy fuel from the depot at a high cost because of scarcity, and you still have that stock, there is no way you are going to lower the price because there is more stock. Okay. So, so inherently, that's why Honorable Gwang is saying, why are you, uh, aren't they behaving? They can't behave until you have completely eh, swept off that artificial pressure, this, the prices will stay. Sorry, but you will be in your view, what, what should be done? Because I will tell you that every week, the Ministry of Energy is saying, in a few days, the price is going see, to come down. See, in a few days, and it's just not coming down. 
I have some small knowledge about fear. Mm. I'm not going to detail. No. <laughs> but, but, but I'll tell you what the ministers, you see, some, so many of these technocrats are not business people. It's like you've bought a stock, okay? Yes. Going stock at like 4,600, okay? Now, government says there is fuel, yes, but I have my stock. If I sell at the current 4,000, I will make a loss. So, the market must first take his losses. Yeah? The, the, right. the stock that was bought in a crisis. All right. So, that's the incident that the energy planners are not factoring in. Okay. So, that's why fuel prices cannot come back. But for me, that's not the problem. The challenge we have is you have empty reserves. Okay? Those strain your resilience as an economy. Two, somebody made a kill mm. of Ugandans. All right. Seventy dollars, a private actor. Actually, Honorable Gwang, you should go after that one. I'm coming to talk about <laughs> yes, that. The, the Honorable Gwang is coming to that. Should Let's go after <laughs> that one. And what will surprise you mm. that the people owning that business cannot be the ordinary people. And that's what I was going to ask Honorable the big, Gwang. That even as he plans to go for them, I hope they are touchable. <laughs> no, first of all, <laughs> first of all, I would like to make one or two clarifications. The arguments my colleague and a good brother is advancing needs to be weighed. If we are consuming 6.5 million liters of fuel per day, how much do we consume as a country per year. According to you, boss, we consume about 2 million, about metric. I need to correct my check on my figures. Why am I bringing this argument up? This thing, you're you saying that the stock I bought expensively is the one driving mm. the prices How of long fuel. does it take for that stock to run out? Yes. To run out. So the fundamental question is, how long does it take for that stock to run out? Yeah. Are you getting me? In the economy. In the economy, which for me I also want to say, how long have we taken ever since the question of truck drivers, the question of clearing of these truck drivers from Malaba took place? How long haven't it almost gone to a month? It's coming to a month, yes. So. The prices should have gone back. Yes, that stock should be finished should by that now. That stock should be finished then by, by, by now. So when you come in to say that the question of hoarding of fuel, that I want to say is one we must investigate. Mm. Because that is now an area where we must all put and it. That's, and that's where he left it all. I'm, investigate I'm coming, it, I'm, then I'm, do what? I'm coming to Especially do, considering that I'm this coming, may to be I'm coming, powerful people. I'm coming to that question. So the question is, one, I want to call upon all of us as actors, including the Shadow Minister of Finance. If he has very credible information for me to help me, help the government, help the economy, help us reduce the challenges we are facing, please, I welcome it. Number two, when we talk about fuel business, I want to confirm both us, the political actors, are in. Mm. It's not a lie. People own petrol stations, and there's nothing which de de denies them from doing that. It is this one, Honorable Chivumbi, we are all guilty. Because you cannot only tell me that the good thing you know some of them, I know, and actually is more knowledgeable <laughs> on my <laughs> Because what I'm bringing this is, like for instance, you are giving good examples. The Matoke driver, I actually have a truck, and I want to confirm to you, me, the owner of a truck, I don't make profits. So the fundamental question is, who are the people who are making profit? My truck carries for me my few cows from one market to another. But when you go back, how much they give you in a day? It's little money. So I want really for us, what I want to come back here that the main issue is to engage the private sector, foundation and private sector players. As far as when we still have the, uh, the, the uh, the, our, the, this economy being private sector led, we have to work within. But I also agree with you that they, we must also begin to look at how do we begin to move with the changing world. Mm. 
That is one thing as leaders Honorary we must Bumbi all be able speaks to... about the fact that government should have or the country should have fewer reserves. That's so true. That when we have an issue like this, we rely on our reserves and therefore the market forces do not kick immediately. To my knowledge and ability, fuel reserves were renovated, which were in Jinja. I want to confirm there are some which are being constructed in Kauku. There are some which are going to be constructed in PG. So I expect government and means of energy to continue working on some of these areas. And I'm happy that I'm in government. These challenges which we have faced now is one which we must be able to address so that we don't, re this, the same th problems don't reoccur in the future. And that is one area really where we must move in family. Right. The last one was on the issues of the COVID test. It's true, like we always do. By that time when we had COVID here at its peak, the, even government, we didn't have enough capacity, which I must accept, and it's not only Uganda, world over. Number Honorable, two, we thought... Yes. Do you remember the way these tests were announced? It was said government is the one going to test this time. And then government went ahead and hired private actors. Uh, and let's, let, let, I'm coming to address that point. But is it bad for government to work with the private sector? If I may also ask that question. We set the price, by the way. The price of $30, it is us government who set it up. But you remember... So if when we talk about private sector, some of them, some of you actors, didn't, didn't want even to work within the certain dollars. That's why some people could go to, I don't want to name some of the private sector play areas where some of these tests were real abnormal and exorbitant. And the reason why we did that was because it was becoming too much. So we said, you know, we cannot be able to allow during these difficult times things to go the way they were moving. But as far as one who is in the matters of economy and monitoring of the economy, I want to say we must work with the private sector. Number two, the challenge, current challenge we face within the country, I must again say it's my role, it's the role of government to work with the private sector mm. to see how to address these matters right. squarely. But I also want to say as a Ugandan, it's not fair for a bar of soap to cost 6000 Yeah, It's not fair for a kilogram of cooking oil a little of cooking oil to cost ten thousand. Not three dollars. That's almost two dollars, which in turn is one which we must come in. And as government is one thing which we shall be able to begin addressing. But I know maybe the chairperson of the private sector foundation or the executive director of the private sector foundation might be watching watching us here. Please, at least the private sector players need to come and try to save the country. It is actually taking us to a level which might be difficult for us for those ordinary people who do not, who live man, ham, hand to mouth. This is an issue that actually made its way to the floor of parliament. Mm -hmm. And uh, the minister of energy was asked to make a statement to parliament. The minister was called upon this week to make that statement. It was on the order paper and the minister did not deliver that statement, did not account to parliament. What Does I want government even have this issue under wraps? What I want to confirm here that government is concerned of these issues and if I also want to thank my colleagues in parliament for raising it up, the Minister of Energy will be able to come to parliament and make a statement because that's our role as executive. We must be able to answer some of the issues which come from our people and particular parliament. I thank you. Honorable Chivumbi. Yeah, no, it all speaks about, um, you know, there is a, a, a young man who made a statement. <laughs> and said, you know, when you, he, was, he was speaking in local language and said, you know, the danger with this government is like a missed call. <laughs> when you say, hello, hello, hello. <laughs> no, is no, there no, anyone I, there? Honorable <laughs> <laughs> Chivumbi, that is really, I, I want to say that we have rules here for this kind of, for this debate. <laughs> Because when I you go at the end of the month, that government you are saying missed call, put money in your account, you don't say hello, hello. Yeah, no, hello. <laughs> so, so, so the government. <laughs> First of all, me and Chivumbi are in government. <laughs> what I want to say is a no, member no, of opposition. And I will tell you, no, yes. and I will tell you that whereas this statement was being demanded, yes. if it was brought, yes. Chivumbi and his colleagues were not going to be there to, to <laughs> discuss it. What, but we will get what, to that. What, what I, was, I was saying, the, 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 that Harry Truman said yes. that the buck stops yes. with me. 
ultimately, the private sector is not in charge of this country. Mm. Yes. We never voted the private sector. We voted the government. And one of the, actually me, as a member of parliament, you know we take different oath. You, you are aware? Mm -hmm. The president takes an oath that has an element to do with the welfare of the people mm -hmm. of Uganda. He commits to ensure an improvement of the welfare of the people of Uganda. Okay? As a member of parliament, my oath, by the way, does not include an element of welfare of the people. Do you know the oath we take? I know. Local government leaders take an oath separate from members of parliament. I don't know whether people of Uganda monitors, they know the difference of those oaths. Me, I take an oath to protect, def uphold, eh? is it uphold, protect, and defend the constitution. The, constitution. the president after taking that other, takes another oath, makes a pledge. The private sector is not an oath. That I can answer. So, that. it's absence when people call. It's, 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 it, it is the test of this time that makes a, pres a government essential. Not in terms of a plenty, it is in terms of crisis. This is when real leadership counts. Quick, you are talking about a minister, the chief executive. Uh -huh. If it happened in another democratic country, the president every day would be at a presser. But I want to explain I want to for citizens who are shareholders, because you see, when the prices of essential commodities go up, you cheat everyone. Or everyone makes a loss. Now, for people out there to say $70, somebody pockets it, and it's just normal. So exceptional things in this country are now passing for normal. We are setting a very low bar for how we review our government. And for me, this is a crisis. We have set very low standards. And we are like pygmies. But first of all, we are like pygmies. I want first in of parliament. All. In parliament, so, where both of you sit, so, you actually hold government to account. You see, government should not be held to account. Sensible government should self account. Why? Because of the social contract. With because the of the not even the social contract. It's beyond social contract. You've asked for a mandate. Mm. You've decided to take it up. Don't give us private sector, should you in but, 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 people making a profit, well, blah, 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 but, blah. But, but, but you see... Which private sector is actually you? Gwang, you're going to come. No, no. Yes. Which private sector is actually, he knows, is actually part of you. But, so, so th it, that's why Rick Wanyu said, for any country to develop, it starts with the emergence of an enlightened elite. Not just political elites across the board. There are for me, my call, the very absence of this one is lack of leadership. It is incompetency. And it's not only in fuel. You've seen today, I was answering some newspaper. Mm. Okay, it was a monitor. They were saying Auditor General, who was reporting Auditor General, 20 trillion of borrowed money. It's not you. You borrow money you can't use? Even at a personal level, you will be ridiculous. But you go out and take a loan, eh? they give it to you, and you don't use it. You keep the money, and you the keep interest the money. starts to you, accrue. You now, now, you begin to pay interest. And we know you, what that has meant for our budget. Let's, let's hear, let's let hear tell Honorable you, Wang, let me because... Me this. Yes. If you did it at a personal level, you'd be a fool. But let me first but, answer... But I don't know if government does it. Let me first, right. uh, let me first answer Honorable Chivumbi. You know... Honorable Chivumbi is here trying to think that government should begin to come up with the, begin to control prices no, 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 no. of market forces of demand and supply. No, because no, no, no. if you think, no, please, I've been listening and I want you to listen carefully. It is true the president takes an oath 
It is true, we all do. But it's also true that running an economy is not like running our houses. We must acknowledge this fact. All of us are players as far as these are concerned. When we're talking about matters of fuel prices, I did give you that the whole world, as of today, I have given you an estimate of how much the fuel, the cost of a liter of fuel is concerned. I can even calm it down to the region, within the ESC region also. I, the only country within the ESC region that, the countries are long, who are within the cost. Their fuel prices are lower. But you want to tell me, those countries who have fuel, lower fuel prices along the coast don't have high prices of commodities within those countries? That pedestrian argument becomes also a problem there. So for us who are landlocked, I have also justified you that. The reason which I acknowledge as government, it was a mistake by some of our technocrats in the, in the area which, which made us to have a crisis within that time. I did explain to you those issues have been addressed. Now, truth be told, you're saying the government is insensitive of the matters of not looking at the commodity prices. Part of the reason why we have committed on behalf of government that as far as I'm in charge of monitoring, this is an area I am going to engage the private sector because it's within my mandate and my role. So for you to say the president is insensitive, I don't agree with you. But anyway, that's the way we are meant to work. So let's get to the facts here. Who are the players who are involved in all this? You know, sometimes we try to push as if it is the only government people who are involved in the private sector. No, including members of opposition. I could even say that we can go to some of the petrol stations, which are known to be those of opposition. Will you get them being cheap? Will you get the fuel <laughs> prices being cheap? You can't. They are the same. Even if you go to some of their markets, big stores in town where they are running, we look at the commodity of some of those Honorable people. Guang, I totally hear you. Yes. But I think a point he makes that yes. is that the government has a mandate, has a responsibility to Ugandans. And therefore, if the prices of commodities, especially necessities, go up, the buck stays with the government. And the government should play an active role other than entirely leave it to the private sector. That's why I want to put it on record here. Maybe I did not mention it clearly, and I want to repeat. I am a minister of state in charge of economic monitoring. My role is to link the private sector mm. with the government. I want, on behalf of government, to commit. I am going to meet the private sector and find out the following. What are the push factors which have driven the cost of soap to go up? I need to do that, and that's sure. my role. Number two, what are the push factors which have given the price of fuel to go up despite us receiving this amount of fuel per day? Why should fuel remain, why should fuel be, its cost be up? That one I'm committing and I'm, I saw an oath to advise the president as yeah. a minister. So when you begin to say the president must be able, as far as the social contract with the people is concerned, I don't agree with that. It's my role. It's the role of minister of energy. We must work together. It's the role of means of finance to handle some of these issues. Right. Honorable Guang, we have seen you <laughs> actually go around and, and hold people to account. I hope on this fuel issue. No, no, uh, I, am, I am more dangerous. Guang. By the way, I'm coming to uh, <laughs> on that part. By the way, I had a meeting with my technical people in, in office, I think, a week ago. And I did specifically address the issues of the economy. That because I advise the president on matters, an independent advice on matters of economy, I told them, leave alone with what finance does, leave alone with what I am, I have that mandate. I told them we must begin to make a lot of research on issues which are affecting our economy, and we must be able to give an independent advice to the president on the way forward. I think there was also an issue which Honorable Chivumbi raised. Was it about what? There was something which I had picked, but. Yeah, but, but Mr. Guang. Yes. All right, very, very quickly, because you know, now quick, we have to take a break. Very quick one. But Mr. Guang, you know you've been uh, going after cows. I've seen you. Mm. By like that you mean chief uh, accounting administrative officers. officers. Yes. CDOs in the districts. Go after these uh, test and fly. 
Maybe let me Th answer those you ones there. Let me that have been pocketing seventy dollars. Let me let me answer you there. Actually, you brought up now. Remember, you brought the issue of why the executive. I want to address myself. The MDAs, they borrow money. They don't spend the money. As a country, we begin to pay interest. First, I want to say this, this matter, we have discussed it as cabinet. And actually, some of the responsible officers, you know, there has been impunity in government. That I want to say this clearly, that has, there has been impunity in some of our technical people. And we are going to address that matter. So the question you've raised, I'm going after small, small, small people, it's not true. I have a blue and black letter, which gives me powers, which I'm beginning. You know, I'm building, I'm, I'm, I've entered in a sector, in an office. I found it there. I have asked for additional technical people. The president has put it in writing to direct me to begin carrying out quarterly performance reviews on each sector. So when you tell me about going down there to get cows, I want to put this on record. When I'm down there, I look at all programs of government, both central and local government. I don't only target. When I enter a district like Butambala, there are central government projects in all ministries which are implemented in Butambala. It is not that central government projects are at mass. No. Like for now, I want to put it on record. I am meant to begin with the Wakiso and Kampala as a city mm. on 21st. I am checking on the entire government. Kampala, capital city authority, is under central government. Honorable Bob. So, so Honorable the road. Bob. So when I'm when down there. That, I hope you will come to the <laughs> no, big no, no, debate no, 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 and we will talk you listen, about you know, yes. When I come to the central government, first of all, I am going to reduce the audit queries which Honorable Chivumbi is talking about. I am going to reduce them because the mere fact that I've been in that area for just six months, there's a feel. Okay. And I want yeah, to guarantee yeah. you. Gentlemen, the, gentlemen, we know, need to take know, a break. Yeah, no, when we return from the break, Honorable you know, Chibumbi, we will begin with you and then we'll wrap up this topic. Uh, please uh, stay tuned because the conversation continues after the break. possibilities. We need to be accurately informed. CTV is your growth partner. With reliable, in-depth news, we tell the story from all perspectives. We bring you the story in real time. Catch our comprehensive daily bulletins in Juba Egorovie at 7 p.m. and p.m. edition at 9 p.m. CTV. Don't blink. Start your day fresh with TV unlike anything you've seen before. Wake up with Sunrise at Sea for your daily dose of freshly cut stories, trending online discussions, self-care and constructive conversations. No topic is off limits. Watch Sunrise at Sea every weekday at 7 a.m. Now showing on CTV. Don't blink. Entertain you. Nga watu kuwati. Ama nyesha mi manja. Mamo buwati. President Bida Bidi Mokaga. Mkawa ni rekoti. Nanga wento na alia ila. Kwa you can call me alia one. But tikutemo uwa alero. Mwetu wa suubiza. Ntugena kuwanga tulimbi tuto vya nja uwa. Ani ya yamba dobrunji. Kapo ya chia kaze kumulembe. Ne, ne, ne gauni ya black. Elina tiara ya black. Tiara. Tiara. English of my kind. Tiara. I feel the beat. You feel the beat? Yeah. Don't blink. 
now showing on CTV. Don't blink. Since 1963, this shirt has united fans and players across the country. It is more than just an article of clothing. It is a sense of pride for us as we catch the kinetic action. In the heat of the competition, we stand with our champion. This shirt brings us together. CTV becomes the principal shirt partner for KCCA FC. We are committed to the game, to bridge the gap and bring you closer to the awesome team you love. KCCA FC, more than just a club. CTV, don't blink. Three words, convenience, passion, and pride. Introducing the KCCA FC app made for you to interact with the best football club in Uganda. Giving you the latest news, transfers, membership options, merchandise online shop, match ticket booking, and fan zone instant messaging. To download the beta app, go to Google Play Store on your Android and search for KCFC. Download the app, sign up, and voila, you're in. Yes, the app is only available for Android users. IOS users, we are coming soon. The KCCFC app, inspired by you, made for you. Welcome back from the break. Thank you for staying with us here on CTV, The Big Debate. And I uh, would like to thank you for the interaction you're having with us on social media. Remember that if you're commenting on Twitter or on Facebook, use the hashtag CTV Big Debate so that we can see your question or your comment. Today we're looking at the escalating prices of commodities brought on by uh, the increase in price for, of fuel. I would like to read a comment here. Uh, somebody said, you know, uh, petrol stations charging 5,000 shillings. Uh, this was what was advised by the Prime Minister. And I remember actually when she said, you know, no one should charge beyond 5,000 shillings. I went to my Twitter account and said, Prime Minister, people are going to charge 5,000. They're not going to come below that because you've said 5,000 shillings. And that's what uh, one of the listeners is saying. But uh, gentlemen, because we'd like to wrap up this topic, our two guests, the Honorable Mwanga Chivumbi from Butambala, he is also a uh, uh, the Shadow Minister for Finance, uh, Planning and Economic De Development. Our other guests, the Honorable uh, Minister, State Minister for Economic Development in the Office of the President, the Honorable Peter Ogwang, uh, our, are our two guests. Honorable Chivumbi, there's something that you wanted to uh, respond well, to. I, whereas went to the break, you know fixing an economy is not rocket science. Apparently, it's something doable, it's something people have done all over. And uh, there are few things that don't change. Even managing a country is not rocket science. It's not, it's not going to NASA to place a, ro <laughs> and a, a rocket in the orbit. <laughs> you know, it is, uh, it is as simple <laughs> as doing the following. Start with the honest people in government who do an honest job. Give you an honest hour. And report correctly. Play by the rules, the strong, the weak. Okay? If rules are rules, it doesn't matter whether you're a minister. Let everybody follow those rules. Let everybody follow those rules. 
Now, government, core to any factor, must be the standard bearer okay, of those rules. It must set the standard of building. You see, me and him come from rural areas. Okay? When you see a primary school constructed by government, it's one of the most dilapidated. How can it be? Can you imagine government or going a private person builds better than government? Mm. And we've seen him visit some of these but places I, that can, have been built and say, but you people, what is this? And I'm not blaming you, General. No, and, and, and then he quotes the yes, amount at which some of these places have been built. Information for you. <laughs> yes. yes. That's information. Yes. That is not the policy of government mm. to build schools which are more dilapidated than private sector. <laughs> it's not. That, so that's all I wanted to tell you that that yes. is not the policy. It's, those, are, those are the corrupt within yes. government. Actually, that is the corrupt private sector working with the corrupt government officials who do show the work. And you're trying to weed out. And that those is now out. the ones which I'm trying to weed sure. out. So, the <laughs> whole mess you are in boils down. Ah, Honorable Chivumbi, <laughs> we are all in this mess. <laughs> no, no. no I've said Actually, the honorable mess we are in. Okay, I said yes, we are. Yes. I'm using it plural. Mm. Boils down to failure to do the small or basic things. Because I want to government. ask another question, you know. And, 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 and Honorable Gwanga knows, have been a, a strong pioneer of most now ideas that mm -hmm. are running some of these economic things. When I exposed the extravagance, you remember, you were in the budget committee. My report was rejected. Okay? Mm -hmm. but the minority I report. Don't. But I showed you at all. Today it's a flying issue in the country. We came out with these loans that are being abused in all our reports. Said there is a problem. How do you borrow money and you don't and, and you don't use utilize it. You don't utilize it. Where is the problem? Now, between him and me, uh, he knows where real money is spent. He wants to go to Wachiso. What's the budget of Wachiso? You see, Honorable I don't want Mr. Chibube, Gwanga to, where's the real money? to become a busy business. No, where's the real money? Eh? No, where's no, the real money no, no, spent? No, no, well, he, he, Actually, no. that's a good he, question. He cannot touch where there is real no, money. No, 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 listen, Honorable Chibubi. You see, in this country, you see, no, no, Honorable, point, Honorable no. Chibubi. And I listen to him. Honorable Chibubi, where's see, the real money exactly. spent? You see, look at the big spenders. Auntie. I've not seen Ogwanga go there. The Auntie. big spenders, if we are to go by budget, budget proportion, exactly. it's infrastructure. Yes. Uh -huh. I know you want to talk about security. Exactly. Uh -huh. And uh, the office of the president. Uh -huh. The presidency. So, so, so you meant to call it you, that. You know his office. You, yes. I would, I would, I would, so you I tell me. You, I was first of all, at, I you see, I know where I want to touch and I'm going to address you know, that. You know, <laughs> you know I, I want, I've told you, the leaders lead by example. I've looked at budget releases, quarterly releases mm. of this year, mm. okay? The office where he works of the president mm. has consumed 212% mm. of its budget by a third quarter. Mm. By a third quarter. If the office of the president can't plan that in this year, this is the amount of money we will spend, and you are a president, Mr. Ogwang, don't waste time. Let me, let, let, let me answer here. Can you, you see, bite the hand that feeds you? First, first of all, don't you waste see, your time. You see, Honorable By third quarter, 120% Honorable consumption. For Honorable Chibumbe, at times... Not a fourth quarter even. You are going to go to 400. Honorable Chibumbe... And you are going to pass that supplementary as parliament. You first wait. Let me first answer him. First, I want to put this on record. I don't want him to begin to think that what we are consuming is not budgeted for. Is here. It's not. No, please. I, Pro I want, I want probably I want, the item, but no, the amount. No, listen. Because whatever we spend mm. is budgeted for and no. approved by parliament. No. I was with you. Are you referring the, to the supplementaries in this case? Irrespective, they mm. are approved by parliament. And that's why I added parliament will pass so those supplementaries. So, you should stop ever thinking here 
is trying to be more clever and trying to think that uh, we are wasting time. For God's sake. Number two, the constitution of the Republic of Uganda this executive authority to the office of the president. So, priority number one are activities which are tailored with the office of the president. And planned. No, listen. O Whatever Obama. he's talking about mm. are planned for. For instance, you are aware science and technology was brought back to the presidency. You are aware what is the purpose of that money? It is for innovation to help our scientists. I am aware of the money is talking about 270 billion goes to science and technology. He's here. That's why I'm happy that he's okay. bringing those issues. I appeared before the budget committee on behalf of the president to defend the supplementary budget. I had Makero University, which came as part of my team. I had issues of Kira. These are the issues which I'm, rem I'm recalling. Are these projects not visible and not seen? Okay. I actually invited. Well, well, first, wait. The question he asks I, that, I, that first is wait. a key question is if the office of the president cannot accurately budget or plan for what it will need for a financial year and therefore comes for a supplementary and ends listen, up spending listen, listen. up I'm to 200% of its budget, to, I'm, then what's expected I'm going from to the rest? That too. Mm. When Minister of Finance gives us IPFs, indicative planning figures, they give us less what we have budgeted for. Do you expect us to go and run the country, uh, the office of the president, using what? These are facts. So you use so the, the, you, the you, question you live is simple. Between what, I, the, you live within what you've been given, knowing we'll come no, back to supplementary. The, so we'll should we it? close the office of the president? No, leave be, no first leave of all, leave I have, within the budget I have, that has been given. I have told you that if I have asked that, please, my budget for this financial year is going to be 600 billion. Mm. You go and give me 200 billion. Honorable Gwang, does this, that happen for all the sectors? No, listen. In fact, you even cut sectors no, blanketly, 40%. Want to, I want first you to get me correct. Because I was answering Honorable Chivumbi, okay. where did this money go to? Despite you bringing this year, I am able to remember it using my head. Mm. I have given you one area number one, science and technology and innovations. Area number two within science and technology innovations is to support the, the, the scientists to help us develop more of the vaccines which are able to spur our economy. And I'm happy to say, Kira EV is here. Is it not doing well? Is it not making Uganda proud? By the way, I read a magazine, one of the journals within the African continent. Kira EV, I think, was number two in the entire continent. And you they say, even won an award recently. Yes, and you say that is nothing? Who is bringing such innovations? Or, so number two, or, let's go back to the issues of the so-called what again, supplementary. Honda Wachivumbi, you know very well that ministries, ministries come and make their budgets. I wish you could support that. We all have the budgets made. We all have money given to these ministries. And then you come and say, okay. Let's go back to the question that Honorable Chivumbi asked. Yes. Because as you know, uh, your office now focuses on economic monitoring that's in true. Wakiso and Kampala. He says that's not where the money is actually spent. The money, we know the uh, areas where big money is spent. And he seemed to imply these are areas that you as the Minister of Economic Monitoring cannot <laughs> Substantially touch. No, first of all, first of all he, we, which he knows me and him know. He wants to go to Watiso. No, listen. First of all, he know, I I want, I'm going to Watiso. You listen. First of all, you <laughs> see. What's the budget of Watiso? You see, you're trying to first of all protect Thagari. No, 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 I'm not. Listen, and I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy that I've actually come to this Buganda region. <laughs> He's trying to demean the work I have been doing. No, 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 if, no, I'm not no listen, I'm listen, not he forgets, and I want to repeat, all central government projects are in the local governments. Beat the roads, for instance, you are a minister of shadow minister for finance. Which are the key sectors of the budget? You tell the country. I monitor no, them. I, you, you tell the country, the good thing here you are, tell the country which are the big, which are the big sectors of the budget. You are the minister of finance, there you go. No. Before I begin to go, no, there. no, I, I know them. Yes, and you I tell the country with you for several. Yes, you tell Six. the country. <laughs> you tell. We, give me first we have, four. We have 15, 45 trillion. Uh -huh. Which go to which okay. sectors? Fifteen of your, of the money goes to the, the debt management. Uh -huh. 
Okay? Yes. The next consuming sector yes. is defense uh -huh. and governance. Uh -huh. Six trillion. Uh -huh. The next one is energy uh -huh. and infrastructure. Uh -huh. The next program uh -huh. is human capital development, uh -huh. which has helped. So now well, you now, let, let me now address. No, no, no. Now you let me now, you, now you let me address no, no, the question because let me now, even tell you yes, it's of the four, forty-five trillion. Yes. Local government don't have even now, a trillion. You see now the, for you are chasing you see, one you see, trillion. You see the misconception he has in his head. You, 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 no, 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 no. Please don't divert me. You know, I don't. This country, what's what's no, the misconception? No, 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 which misconception? You see, that's, you the that's, why, that's why I want. I to, you that's why I want. I want first take away your thinking, and I want to make to put this clear to you. Please remove that from your mind. Never take your thinking back to begin thinking. I'm looking for one trillion. I want to repeat, and I want to ask you: in Butambala has a district. Don't you have central government projects which are there? Are they implemented that uh, district? No, that's even if they implement. So they, you go after a cow so and the, the, the best, the best, the best you'd have asked me: what scope do you use when you're carrying out your monitoring? That would have been a fair question, so that I educate you. But you don't go and begin saying you demean. You have said the defense. No, you have said the defense. I want to answer Gentlemen, you. Gentlemen, so, uh, when that this. monitoring not, not in Wakiso and Kampala begins, <laughs> no, no. I would like to invite both of you back Actually. so that we discuss it based on what the Honorable uh, Peter Gwang has found on the ground. No, but, and we assess him based on that. I want, I want first to make this clarification. Uh, no, I was in Bunyoro. In listen, listen, listen. I was in Bunyoro. I started my monitoring. By the way, the countrywide monitoring with the oil roads. That is it. How many kilometers of roads have been constructed in Bunyoro by central government? Over 700 kilometers. How much money has government thanked in those 700 kilometers? I went and checked on the central processing facility. Where the, oil, the entire oil in the Albertine is going to be. Have you been there? I've been there. So do you know how much work, how much work is going taking place? Uh -huh. I went to cover the international the airport. So when you think, when I get to those areas, don't think I'm looking for chicken thieves. No, but even if you are a chicken thief, should you be permitted to misuse public funds? You are the one who is saying, all the time I'm looking at the law. Even if a chicken thief, is there any provision in the laws of this country which you say you should abuse public funds? I want the shadow minister to tell me. No, Mr. Mr. Uh, <laughs> my, you my, my honorable <laughs> colleague, you see in this country, <laughs> of ours, if you steal a phone mm -hmm. at the park, you'll be leaked and possibly beaten to death. Mm -hmm. If you go to the park and they know you, or you go to a village and you know you've stolen a, a billion or two, eh, they will give for you red carpet. We live in this country, and I know this happens every day. We witness it. Churches run up again with you, whatever. You are the big man. On, you, you get, they'll give you a front seat. This happens. The only thing, I'm not undermining the small interventions. I come from a background that believes, start where you are. Okay? Use what you have, all you can. Even if you start with the CDO, okay, who is corrupt, a message that there is zero tolerance. A coin is stolen, is stolen. That's where I come from. Now, and I'm not, and you know where I came from when you even came to the budget with the request, said, Mr. Ogwang, they give you money. You are doing some work. Mm. I've even told you I want you in my district. Interestingly, mm. even the president yes. praised mm. him for the yes. work that he's doing. So, 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 I so I'm, not, I'm, I'm not I'm about. I'm not 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 about. Yes. But, but you also know uh, we live in a country where the Ombudsman, eh, who is the. The Inspectorate of Government, Inspector, the IGG. The IGG. When he came up, he says, I'm going to take a tough stand against the corrupt, she was advised to go slow. Not on the CDOs. He is being encouraged to go after mm -hmm. the CDOs. I, the the, the I, inspectorate of government being I can, on the corrupt go I, slow. I, I can still now, Mr. Ogwang is applauded no, for no, going after small no, people. No, 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 no. That is politicking. I am no, here to really say the position of the president was this, and I want to speak for the president. 
There was a proposal by, her, uh, by Honorable Namsang of Bet Kamiya that can we have a life audit? Which, lifestyle audit. A lifestyle audit. Mm -hmm. Which, in my opinion, is welcome. However, we need to discuss what are you auditing? Honorable Chivumbi is here. He's a member of parliament. He has his earnings. He has his personal businesses he's doing, despite him being a member of parliament. So when you find Honorable Chivumbi that per month, me and him, if the country doesn't know, we're entitled to a net pay of six million. Are you getting me? But if you find, you begin to investigate, but Honorable Chivumbi has 10 petrol stations. Where, how has he got the 10 petrol stations? Honorable Chivumbi's children, has he declared them? If he has declared his income versus his assets, are they correlating? So the question was, please, we must first say, what are you looking for on Honorable Chivumbi? But not to say, stop it. No, the <laughs> president said, go slow. And now what I did, I'm sure. Actually, before I came here, I was in a meeting with the deputy IGG. That's why I'm telling you, for me, I have not slept. Why were we meeting? As stakeholders were involved, for me, who is carrying out monitoring? When I find those so-called small thieves is talking about, there are areas where I must now work closely with the IGG and say, please, IGG, mm, these are your people, follow them up. For me, I have monitored, I've found a lot of question marks, police, CID, because as I speak now, I have CID working with me, moving with me in the field. I have uh, prosecutors moving me with the field. I have engineers moving me with me in the field. I have auditors moving with me in the field. So now we are now saying IGG, come in. We go together to the field. Why are we doing all this? When we say, as of now, Honorable Chivumbi, I have 285 cases. Of that, 90 are meant to be produced in court. The balance are under investigation. IGG has said, I'm picking interest in all these cases. We, so, we are present in what say, ah, ah, please, stop carrying out lifestyle audit. No. Can we discuss it and begin to look at? If Ogwang is having his six million, he has gotten his loan. Because some of our people, officers we sent to the field, might come and arrest Chivumbi, might have his own other issues on Chivumbi. Then they begin misusing that power they have to look after the Chivumbis. That's why we're saying, Go slow. However, Honorable Chivumbi, I want to conclude in this point by saying that on matters of misuse and abuse of public funds, all of us here, me and you, which I did say one time in somewhere, that how can they be having ghost projects in an area where you are a member of parliament? Where I am a member of parliament. Am I not also capable? That is so a question. Are those, are those areas you're going to touch? Because at the mm. end of the day, <laughs> when mm. these holes are not plugged, the citizen yes. pays the price. That's true. That's why we must first accept here that nobody should begin to say, I am a member of a parliament of opposition. But there are ghost projects in this area. So the question is, are you doing your work? Because he knows our roles as members of parliament oversight. He, it doesn't, he invited he, you to Butambala. Yes, he doesn't bother. Did it need me to begin moving out for him to invite me to Butambala? Is that, was it necessary? But, what is his role? But, but, but can I, I can also proudly <laughs> tell you. <laughs> no, what is his but, role? I can also, Mr. Gwang, on yes. the personal basis, yes. tell you mine is one of the most efficient around this. No, we are coming there. You, you come. <laughs> and, you come. And, you, and when you come, I can tell you, I can tell you, Mr. Gwang, I've been tougher hmm? on oversight than even most people think. They Ask do, the cow from the there. The good thing now, now the good now, thing, I don't want us to waste much, a lot of our time. time. But my, my argument is... Uganda, you I see, come, you see, central my government, argument, local my, government, my argument Butambala. Is, mm. And by the way, I want to say this. Honorable members. I have members. had a discussion with Honorable members. Positions. With due respect, that's why you see, these are some of my close friends, whom I have a lot of respect for. The lead of opposition, he met me and told me, I need you in Masaka City. I said, sir, I'm coming. When I was in the Bujiri municipality, I moved with Honre Basuman in my car, and people were wondering, eh, a member of parliament of opposition moving with the minister in his car, 
The criminals were confessing on misusing public funds. What if a man stood up and said, by the way, I want to be honest today, never run for me to ask me for legal advice. I didn't know that you people have been abusing. Sir, I consume that hospital, Bujiro Hospital. Government sends in money for renovating the hospital. The criminal, that's central government, means of health. You know what they did? 1.1 billion was put there for renovation. They spent less than 200 million. You go and look at the hospital. Then the criminal says, sir, forgive me. I want to confess. I misused the money. The billion shillings. The billion gentlemen, shillings. gentlemen. So, Honorable members. Anyway. At the end of the day, mm. what the citizen wants to see is, better service is that delivery. precisely yes. better service delivery for them the to parties. be able, for their money yes. to be able to purchase for them the things that they need. That's true. And until we go away from saying, you know, yes. what the office is doing, how you're holding people to account, other people feeling, and which is really the gist of our discussion today, are they feeling the effect and the impact of these interventions? Yeah, you know, you know as I concluded, I told you, when the people of Uganda want a government, it's a missed call. Recently, and this is for data consumption, and the public may be interested, I've been looking at education with my small research department. I'm looking at sector. And I'll give you, not to bother you, okay? One million Ugandans get enrolled in P1. By P7, there are 600. 600,000. 600,000. Yes. By senior four, eh? They are, they are four, 400,000. By senior six, those who have qualified to go to university. And other tertiary and institutions, tertiary, yeah. They are 100,000. Now, to, out of 100,000, government in all institutions pays for 4,000 at university level. Okay? Then, loan scheme is 1,500. Okay? Diploma, government pays for 6,000. A total of 11,000 out of 100. Now, 888 something is left in the hands of poor people to pay fees. That's why they sell land. Okay? That's why they take huge loans. Now, a government of that caliber, and I've given you the data, by the time they reach tertiary, there are only 100 out of a million th that you are looking at. Even out of a, over 100, you are able to only go for 10,000. 4,000 for government, 1,500 for, 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 for Nani. My, 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 I've told my boys, come on, give me all this data, give me all this research. It speaks, and I've gone into other areas, and I've, I'm discovering a whole lot of, 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 of seeking information. That's why for me, when you talk about, as the shadow minister for finance, that's why, you know, we, we are putting up many, many other issues, packages. I've just told you education. By senior, for, can you believe 400 Ugandans don't finish primary school? By senior four, <laughs> six point six million Ugandans can't reach senior four. By the time you go, it's a hundred thousand. Now, look at that kind of data. Maybe I need to. So, so the, the, the information I want the public to know, because we've talked about sensitivity. How do people feel government? All these stories we talk about here, people don't feel it. Ogwanga, you were a member of parliament. Okay? Yes. You've been elected twice. Yes. Me and you, no. Ah, not twice, three times. I'm three now times. getting, this is my third time. This mm. is his third and time. And that is the same to him. Okay. No, no, you, no, no, no. Tru Truth or false? No, 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 no. You both joined in the ninth parliament. Exactly. Right? Yes. But, ninth but parliament. still it was the ninth parliament. Okay, let, let's, let's, <laughs> let's, let's, let, let's speak to that. You know, Ogwanga, what our phones have become part of government. 
You must buy an ambulance. You must buy a tractor. You are, the MP is an invited guest on every function. Now, if people of, what the people of Uganda want you to you know. See, you see, I'm, I'm coming to where the crisis is. Mm -hmm. That's why of late I'm completely sold to the idea that the current political economic arrangement simply cannot answer our challenges. But you see... And, like, and for me... So what would answer our challenges? You know, like, our challenges, you need, you need, and I'll be honest with you. Yes. You don't only need the political reforms. You need a complete reorientation of the way we run this country. I've looked, at, I've told you where the money is. Okay? Where Ogwanga wants to go, there is no money. Honorable Ogwang insists that. Uh, no, 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 I, no, 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 I told him right. where yes. he wants to go and, 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 and become busy, 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 busy. But you see, yeah. all right. <laughs> there's a body. Let me find out. There is no money. And, 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 and let us remember that at the end of the day, what we are talking I, I about here that. is that the citizen should feel these interventions but from but but, but first of yes. all but look at education but the first of all does first it of all, shock you my brother iguma let me first give you this you see sometimes i really first of all i thank the president and the, the 1995 constitution because that's why our brother here will take it i don't know any anyway it's, it's not in the near future they are opposition my meaning of opposition is the alternative government. But fundamentally, I wish you could invite them here to come and give the alternatives they have for people of Uganda to understand. This pettiness, they can we posture here. But truly speaking, where is the alternative position of education for opposition? Honorable Gwang, if I may ask, yeah, it is. Don't, don't they give alternative Let, policy The good statements? thing, let me be honest they, with you. Mm. We have given them the, the Constitution, the, parliament, the Administration of Parliament Act, recognizes opposition. There's a leader of my very good friend and I respect. Maybe and now, we him here last maybe week. now, maybe now that he, I have him there. Because I have a lot of, maybe now that the Honorable Chief, but even then, a fundamental question still I pose. We are now how many? Our first wait, you are speaking, I was listening. How many months have we been in this government? We are now how many months ever since we were sworn in? We are six, seven months in power. So the fundamental question is, while after, despite you carrying out that well-elaborated research of yours, which still I, I might not agree on the figures, because I have also to go back and ask means of education, what are the figures? However, if the figures, are in, in, in case they are correct, what are the factors? They're actually Posi very close, yes. They're what very are, close to what, the what are the factors? official figures. Okay, as an alternative government, where is the alternative policy? Maybe in me who is in the government, I might say, okay, let me also. I will tell you what part of their <laughs> alternative policy has in relation no, to education. And just, just as, for example, they've been pushing the central government mm -hmm. to do school feeding mm -hmm. because that's part of what's causing mm -hmm. many mm -hmm. to drop out of schools. Mm -hmm. They have been pushing for inspecting mm -hmm. the schools. They've been pushing for increase of the capitation grant mm -hmm. so that the schools are actually able see, Iguma, to absorb and keep my, these people my, in school. And my, actually, My brother Iguma, mm. that is what you're speaking as a journalist, <laughs> but I don't think what you're speaking as a journalist is what I have on black and white. So that I go to the parliamentary library, I, as a researcher, as a government, that okay, this is what is there. I have been with him there. Honorable Chivumbi, between me and you, let's be realistic here. Is it there? I'm happy today you are a shadow minister. Even if we go to the means of finance, why himself is a shadow minister? Okay. What is the alternative see, of how this economy this must be managed? Actually, I think, huh? I think one of the reasons that's why Honorable Chivumi <laughs> became shadow minister for finance huh? is because even when he wasn't, hmm. uh, he used to bring alternative proposals that were in but relation to the But you know that he's under national unity platform, <laughs> no, no, no. which is a leading opposition party. But, 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 but Mr. Yes, Honorable Chivumi. <laughs> no, no, and, 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 and I need, and I need no, to no, no. add 
that actually it was intentional that we were actually going to speak about parliament in the second segment. Actually, of the show. we need to and go it's to good parliament. That we into yes, that because yes. Honorable Chibubi, <laughs> even as you know the opposition, you know, uh, has been given hmm? he mentions in the administration of parliament act, act. The, the, there's all these you know uh, roles and privileges that the opposition has. You've been criticized quite a bit because how long are we going to yes, lamenting and, and even. Hmm? Uh, the strategy that you've taken on right now for boycotting parliament for mm. uh, two weeks has been, uh, you know, cast with a lot of uh, criticism in relation to, you know, uh, you're doing this for political gain at the expense of your people because, you know, parliament continues to discuss very important things in your absence. And by the way, the Chivumba, you know, as he comes in, and Honorable Chivumba, I have a lot of respect for you, really. And the Chivumba, you know, is just there being pushed to some of those ideas. Those are not, that is not Chivumbi thinking. Even the... Oh, well, let's wait and hear what no, he says, but I will tell you that this is what I have seen as a journalist. Honorable Gwag, what I have seen as a journalist is that their strategy has actually worked because you are listening to them and there are some concessions that government seems to be making. Thank you, Chivumbi, yes. You are being insulting to say that the Chivumbi no can be pushed. No, no, no. First of all, no, no, no. First of all, first of all, let me tell you this: mm. I'm the last person to do anything I don't believe in. <laughs> I can tell you this: I have capacity to speak true to power to whoever, mm. be it a president, be it a king, be it whatever. If I feel you are wrong, I will tell you. Now we we decided this. I was. In my small role, okay, in in the institutions where I sit, fairly few policies come when we have not met and elaborately discussed them and debated them, the pros and cons. Mm. Now, but you also handicapped with with what you can do in the circumstances. Now, there is the strength in being weak. Because once you are weak, then you can um, elaborately come out with the strategy. And I can tell you, it's a tremendous success. We decided. And we own up. And we knew there that two weeks are where there will be business in the parliament. But the question is, we needed to send an equivocal message to government that torture look you are speaking about Kakwenza those pictures you want to tell me okay look there is dinner to be served so you first eat before you care about people tortured before you witness human rights what's politicking in about burning people's buttocks Shouldn't a country for a moment stop and say, wait, is this happening amidst our watch? That's why we started with General Nirumu. We have a constitution. Our constitution was not premised on tomorrow. Okay? And aspiration of a better day. It is caused in regret of our bad history. And it was a a lobbying con, they call it a lobbying con eh, line, says never again should we be part of this. Now, you have gentlemen who want to come here, it's about business as usual. You see, the, our culture in this country is that exceptional things become normal. You lose life. I've been a shadow minister for internal affairs, and you know, okay? I met people who were tortured in Narofenia. I met men, young men of our age, who can't work. Not because of nature, it's because they've been tortured. We have safe houses, we have human rights services. You, me, you can't be away for two weeks from parliament. You are politicking. It's an insult. It's because the elite of this country are not sensitive. For as long as there is dinner on their plate of food, it's okay. The rest of the country can go hang as long as they have their own insurance cards in their pocket. So we are 
doing this because we care about this country. Mr. Ogwang, I have been where I am. Today, it can be you. It can be me. You remember when I moved a very man, one of my best speeches, by the way, I gave it when we were debating the Public Order Management Act. Mm -hmm. Because I'd been a witness. Even the Speaker of Parliament, as Mr. Olanya, um, Ratunare Bolanya, told me that's his best speech he has listened to in the best two years of Parliament. But remember what Amam Baba has answered after that terrible speech. He said, Yes, you can be persuasive, but we're here because of numbers. I was on the steps of Parliament. When a cousin sister to a mama and baba, is in, who Jacqueline, Jacqueline, the one who was in East African community, called me to go to parliament and move a, a matter of national importance that one of my mama and baba has been arrested under Public Order Management Act. So these torture, those tortured are not my brothers, are let, not my sisters. Let me, let me first say so, Mr. Ogwang, on the question of, speaking, by the way, on the question of rights, mm. anything can stop. All right, speaking on of On the question of death, anything can stop. Let, Don't tell me let, that let, a, a let, session let, of power, let, what will it change? Let, let me first put this clear to So, one what one. have you done when you were away in two oh, weeks? Let, let, let me first put this on record. That has to fundamentally change the country. First of all, let me first put this on record again to Honorable Chivumbi here. That and it might, it, it, might, it might, it might first, I was first, I want to say this. There's no policy of government which says people must be tortured. It's not there. But you are in charge of torture. Listen, it's not there. That one I wanted to go on record. Number two, those who have been tortured, there are two things which are coming out fundamentally. Mm. And this is one area where we must all accept to face it as it is. For instance, the talk of the town and everywhere is Kakwenza, 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 Kakwenza. There's Masereka as well. And the Masereka, name them. I have, you, 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 you first listen, yes, I was listening you, to you. Yes. Kakwenza was arrested to, to the information I'm getting. Because first of all, I was not prepared to, to, to debate on this because I would have carried out research. To what I have, Kakwenza had been arrested twice. What is the cause? With due respect. And this is now, it's a new, I think it's a new wave. That for me to be famous, for me to be known, for me to be seen as a human rights activist, for me to be seen as a Democrat, I must insult, specialize to misuse the law on cyber that comes on the misuse of computer act i must insult people honorable chivumbi with due respect to you can you allow can you permit can you yourself go to that extra mile all right honorable Guang, if now, i'm ask, coming there I'm if it is true i'm coming to that let, point first okay, of all let's because, take it that it is true because first of all he did no first i'm coming to that, that point just please please torture i'm coming to that point now, when we say he has been tortured, fundamentally, we are saying, okay, if Kakwenza has been tortured, who are the people who tortured Kakwenza? Mm. Are you getting it? Because yes. as far as I'm because concerned... Because you stated yes. that government's policy yeah, exactly, is no torture. Exactly. That's government's policy now, for those who That's torture. why now I'm saying, if mm. he has been tortured, the question is, there have been out. Honorable Minister of Justice and Constitutional Affairs came and made a statement to Parliament. Now the question, which for me, which for us as government were saying, were investigating, who are the people who tortured Kakwenza? But also, let's not encourage the more Kakwenzas to misuse the power and the laws which we have to continue carrying out and lying that on human rights. Let's be realistic. We must all come out and say, even you Kakwenza, you erred here. Even the torturer. Has he erred? That is what we must be discussing. So for you now to come and say, I, I, I am here, eh? we are continuing to torture this and this. Now come about Masereka. And that's why I'm saying that I have not got all the facts, but truth be told, there are some of us who are becoming ex extremists. No wonder the right honorable the speaker 
No wonder they can declare anybody dead. No wonder, and all these are the most praised people. How can a colleague even abuse a speaker of parliament? Can you believe that? That's where we are going. But Honor that is an elected leader. Honorable, I know there's many <laughs> things that have been brought up that <laughs> you want to respond to. But the one that he ends with, mm -hmm. uh, insulting of the speaker of parliament, leading to uh, a matter of national importance to, uh, you know, uh, remove uh, your commissioner, uh, you know, that's the strategy of the NRM. Your strategy to censure, it seems like their strategy seems to be gaining more mem momentum and may be successful. Your strategy to censure a minister because of non-response in, in your words to uh, torture seems like it's falling yeah, by the wayside. Yeah, one, one or two things as a country. Actually, um, I'm getting fairly worried as a Uganda. of tolerance. Honorable Guang, the constitution made, there were things they called non tolerable rights. That one I know. I says, never again that one for any Ugandan to be mm. in servitude. Mm. Okay? And that's why I'm disturbed when people say torture, but... Torture, because but. there is no but. There is no but. Non-derogable. Non-derogable. The other thing was, and, and let's be, is habeas corpus. corpus. Whether dead should be found. And fair buried. hearing. F fair hearing. And torture. Now, servitude and habeas corpus, to an extent, can be handled. They are not easy. But the most quantifiable to determine our value system as a country are torture and fair hearing. The two are under attack. The right to bail. You have a situation where one says, don't provoke us. You subjugate a judiciary and it gives in. The Chief Justice begins to say, let me make a review. These were, you know, now, the one against torture is non direct. There is no but, there is no qualification. There is no ifs. No Ugandan should be tortured no matter what. A Frenchman, Kumuktekas, the one who came up with the maxima of human rights, this is what he said. I hate to hear what you say. Okay? But I will die to ensure that you say what I hate to hear. There is no amount of hate, of, of, of words spoken against me that would drive me to say, oh, don't speak. That's the maximum of a Democrat. We, are, we hold it no, to that but, standard. No, but his Democrats are abusing people. We hold people. that standard. Now, for is me... There, is there provision which we must say that for us to be no, called no, democratic, no, 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 we no, must... I've not said... Uh, no, listen to me. There are principles which are you've defined to, to make me. what it's called by... You, you've said... Hmm? Let me, Mr. Hmm? Ukwan. Yes. You see, we've been having a cultural reset and standard set by a, a particular leadership. We have had the benefit of constant uninterrupted leadership of this country now nearly for 40 years of NRM. So we are speaking about a generation that has have grown in this environment on the watchful eye of your leadership. I've been on television to, to, and witnessed a president say, swine. People grew up knowing a president can abuse. Mm, what about you? No, no, no. I don't agree this, with you there. On no, national no, day celebrations. No, no, no. no. On national day celebrations. All the president's and we statements. This argument listen. Before, and we made this argument All before. Right. <laughs> that should we have leaders mm -hmm. that freely set an example that it is okay to abuse. 
Here you are. By the way, here let, you are. Let me first Nobody answer abuses. You. By the way, I've been around. No, no, good no, enough no, 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 I can no, even be fair to others. Can I, can I've I, been around. I've I, listened to you. No, right. I want to well, listen you, to you. You actually, honorable I've, I've, I've listened. You actually have to wrap that up because our time yes, is almost. Yes, I've listened uh, to, to Mr. Gwanga. Oh, I want first to say this. Honorable Gwanga, I'm actually going to come to you. Yes, yes. I've listened to my colleague here, okay? This kind of tolerance has been breeded. You are speaking about a generation proudly, immunized, grown, educated by you. What happened with the cultural set? But can I answer now, something? Now, now, now. Okay. And, and right. no, I've said, no, you are actually going to answer. And you are going to say, yeah, when you set not a going bad to end example, before you actually have when you set a bad example, it comes down to haunt you. It comes down to haunt you. Let me speak about what is in the parliament. I'm the acting, Very briefly. Yeah, I'm the acting leader of the opposition. Mm. And it's my duty to Where ensure... Where is the leader of opposition? No, no, no. I'm the acting leader of the opposition. I'm here. Okay, all right. Now, my duty is to ensure, one, it is immeasurable at rest. Mm. And we, ca we come to a conclusive uh, mutual understanding. Fighting is easy, but damage is... A it's normally enormous. And I've been engaging the chief whip, the speaker, Honare Bozake, and, and let's work out a solution. That's where I come from. Okay? That's where I come from. And we're only saying, you know, you read my letter, was that a due process, even if people, when they are when I'm guilty, even if you want to presume guilty, okay, I have a due fair hearing. Okay? Let a due process in accordance with our rules of procedure. Blah, blah, be undertaken. But secondly, behind the scene, at a leadership level, we are engaging to ensure that this matter is resolved in Mikabla. And I hope okay. we succeed. But even if we fail, there are also principles. You know, you know, because I'm I'm reading a group, I'm I'm I'm, I'm fairly uh, not at liberty to be as free thinker mm. on this. One. <laughs> <laughs> I I strongly believe I'll be able to handle this carefully up until when the rope comes back. Okay. And my view is that we have taken the logical step. I think the tempers are coming down, but. Let's promote a culture of tolerance. Me Even and in politics. I've, 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 all right. I've we, ever we, been we need to hear with the Ugwangia. We have ever part of First of all, we I, need to hear I, from Honorable you know, Ugwangia because have, we really I, have I, to I, end I, in, Yes, in, I have been. First in of about all, two minutes. On issues he raised fundamental about the head of state, I once said this if there's any leader who has been very, very tolerant to us, the people of Uganda, and I want to repeat, we shall live to remember, is Yoweri Kaguta Museveni. If there is a leader who has been insulted by all kinds of people and they live here, they go to their homes, if there's, it is only in Uganda today, I have not heard of a refugee. I have not heard of people going for seeking maybe, it is just those who want to leave your country on purpose of trying to look for ways of surviving out of Uganda. But you can debate, you can, like my president, he's abused, he's insulted, but you go home and sleep. That is, that, is, that is my one leader. But you, there are other states within the, er, the region here. Can you do it? You can't. Should we live in no, 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 do, do no. But, but I want first... Those who are not no, doing no, no, well. no. I want first to bring this here. All right. So when we're talking about to the question of tolerance, my leader is tested and proven. That's it. Number two, what's happening in parliament is one thing. First of all, I'm happy I was a commissioner of parliament. And I really want to say this to the new leaders coming up. That, uh, and I'm happy that Honorable Chivumbi is here. And I want to repeat, you are a very good member of parliament for, from opposition. You respect yourself. You respect the words you say. But for a whole commissioner, and if you go to the hands of parliament, for that day I was in parliament, the right honorable speaker 
Where what, you, listen you, first. Listen. Let, let, no, let's no, listen no, no. to him. Listen. Yes. Because, very quickly. Because very, 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 yes, because really I know. Really battling with time here Yes. Now. The right one was speaker. Was, it was a question of, again, torture. She said, if I can remember and quote her words, that uh, she recalls at one time, Honorable Zake was tortured. When he was tortured, he never got, actually won a case in court. However, the same Honorable Zake helped, as, helped the parliament of Uganda, where I am a member of parliamentary sports team and football team. He is a member, he used to be in the ninth parliament. He was our number two in the parliamentary football team to win a gold for Uganda when we were recently in Russia. The statement was not in a bad motive. The statement was trying to send a, a message again to me in the government that yes. despite him going but through a challenge, but what, what did she get? A commissioner who is by the commissioners within parliament as a commission. Yes, Honorable yeah. Gwang, but there's a procedure for removing I'm coming the commissioner. There. I'm coming there. So first of all, I'm trying to explain the circumstances where parliament is now. Because for me, I want to say I am up here while also I'm a member of parliament. Why didn't they, my honorable colleague, even if, let's say, even if the speaker had errored, the commissioners are, are, are like ministers of the speaker. Why couldn't you come and walk to right honorable speaker? Because even if they, are, they put up, they have right. gone on a strike. But uh, they are within the principles of parliament. Why didn't he go to the speaker and say, but right honorable speaker, what was the purpose of this? Okay. But what did he do? Look at that tweet. That is the radicalism gentlemen, I'm talking about. Gentlemen, so for me, I want to put this on record as I live that my colleague needs to be punished for the actions. Because we are leaders today, we are leaders tomorrow. All right. And we must work within the rules we have, of parliament and the rules of procedure. We have to bring this to a close, not because we've finished discussing what has to be discussed, but because we are out of time and we've got to respect uh, your time because this show ends at midnight. As a citizen, continue to watch your leaders and hold them to a high standard so that as a country, our standards at all levels are high. From the big debate today, I'd like to say good night, God bless you. Until next week when we have another edition. I'd like to thank our guests and to you, our viewer, you make this show and the rest of our programming. Don't blink.